Hey YouTube, we're back with part 8 of the UMX Aero Commander. And where we left off, we had just got these flaps cut out. And we just have this kind of taped closed temporarily. We still don't even have the servos set just quite yet. But our next maneuver is going to entail getting a control rod um, under the nacelle and into the body of the plane. And it's going to be a little challenging. And I'll show you real quick, I'll refresh you of our, our newest issue. And that is, as you can see, this is the line, this panel line is the line that this pivots on. And then this is the panel line that this pivots on, which is going to present a bit of a problem. Not 100% sure how I'm going to get it done. Um, but let's go ahead and get to work and try to figure it out. You may have to do this twice. So we have 0.81 millimeters here. And then we also have even smaller, which is 0.64 millimeters. I'm a little bit concerned that 0.64 is probably not going to be quite enough. Let's just go with this. And usually I'll try to use up the shortest piece I've got first, which looks like, oh, I evidently have one that slipped out. So that's, that'll be the one I use. So when you're working with this stuff, guys, it's probably worth it to put the safety glasses on. But I'll just leave that in your court. <coughs> so you can see how there'd be an issue because basically these usually have to pivot on both sides. Now the other thing is I'm not 100% sure what's inside this in the cell. So we may have to use a tool that you guys have only seen real briefly. And uh, you can get these things super cheap. I think I'm going to go ahead and try to use this real quick. We'll see. It'll give us a view of what's inside here. So, give me one second, I'll get the... Okay, so this is camera Phi. So it's got an, it's an endoscope cam. And there's a bunch of stuff that comes with it. But, like, if you're trying to read a label, it can be a little bit challenging because it's hard to, like, know exactly which way is up. So I've got the up orientation figured out. So step back, see if you can see what you're working on. And then as you enter with the camera, then most of the time you get a view of what you need to see. Well, the trouble is in this case is I don't know if I can even fit this thing in there. You can certainly get a lot closer than you could with anything else. I might see what I need to see anyway. Because really, we're just looking at this spot here. We're trying to figure out what's right back here. And I don't want to have to cut this open. Because that's just one more thing i got to do. It's sort of tempting to just take and lift this and hold it up. Because that's just going to make a little bit of an opening. Oh, and then also there's a light. See how I'm turning that and it gets darker? So it, it usually works pretty awesome. I've been out of some, I've gotten out of some nasty spots with this tool before. Let's see if I can just get it in there. I'm just gonna ram it in there. Except I can't really do that. It's just a little bit too long to reach through in this configuration. Um, well, anyway, we might have to rethink that a little bit. Let's pause it. Okay, so I just remembered in this kit, it came with this little 45 degree mirror attachment. And so that's what we're going we're gonna to use. Of course, you get all these little things with it, and you think, boy, I don't suspect I'm going to need any of that. It's small enough, it should be pretty easy. Okay, so we'll just, it screws on. Let's see if we can get it to where we don't have any of the thread showing. Okay, and then we're going to take and turn this knob up so we have a nice, nice light. There we go. 
I don't know if you guys can tell from the video, but we're upside down right now. And you can see the linkage there that's attached to what is evidently the control rod right there. Um, so let's just shut this off. This is probably not going to give us enough control over the image to really do too much good. But it's cool to use. I've used it a couple of different times. I use it on the Bird of Time. A couple of different planes. I use it on the the Airbus, if I recall. I had to feed some wires. So, what we're going to do instead is we're just going to start thinking about how long this needs to be. And my biggest dilemma is that it needs to get fed through, but I don't know if I can bend it first. And so really it's this panel line right here that we're lined up with. I guess we're just going to try it, because like, what do I have to lose? I'm not going to damage anything else, I'm just going to probably reach underneath the mechanism. Haven't hit anything yet. Okay. Now we're out. I'm just going to open it up a little bit. I don't like it when it breaks like that. That's so frustrating. The foam broke a little bit. But there's not a whole lot we can do about that at this point. We'll just have to glue it back in. We may have to go ahead and uh, energize this so we can test and see if we're going to have any interaction with the servo play. Because that would be uh, an issue that we'll have to work around. I'm just going to glue this right now so that it's not an issue later. Okay, just throwing a little glue on there. A little CA. And just a spritz of kicker. Grab one of these, squish it around, just push it back into place. Okay, good enough. Okay, so now that we've got that done. So normally I bend these rods, but I normally don't have to go through two different things like this. And that's got me wondering how the heck I'm going to do this. I knew this was going to be a challenge, this particular aspect of it. I just didn't know to what degree. Okay, there's the hole. Okay, so now once that's through, then you can start manipulating it back to where you need it to be. We can get it inside the, the aircraft, inside the fuse. Okay, so now we're in the fuse. And so obviously getting this one to, to move will be um, relatively easy. Except that it's not going to be. Because <laughs> really we have to take and somehow pull this up and kind of bend like a triangle shape while not allowing it to bend elsewhere. So really the first bend, the first fold that needs to happen needs to kind of happen inside. So we might as well, I don't know guys, I don't have a real great plan for this. This is just, uh, this is just one of the challenges of doing this, I guess. And you can see it's shooting way out there. So let's go ahead and open this up. We need to be real careful the way we do this so that we don't damage the flaps that are in there. So we'll fold that down, we'll fold this down. Should be okay, yeah, we're okay. You can see how it's in there now. Okay, so that's actually about what I was expecting for this part. Grab some pliers that little chunk out. I hate those little chunks. So now the challenge becomes I'm going to fold that at a 90 but is it easier to just feed it in having already folded it at a 90? 
And then the next challenge becomes, where do all the folds happen? Because obviously I can't fold them and then stick it in. That won't work. I'm going to have to just do it after it's already in there. And then how much do I need? That's the other big challenge. So you can see kind of where the servo is laying right now. The linkage is going to be over here. Probably favored to one side slightly so we can stay close to the center. This might have been a plane where it would have made good sense to just go ahead and use two servos. But then you ruin this beautiful scale look on the outside. So it's just hard to swallow. Now since this is a first bend, I can just bend it the easy way. Just whatever way is convenient, because it doesn't really matter what way it bends. Okay, so now you can see what I was talking about in that first video. As this moves, it's going to actuate in this sweep, but then the other one is going to sweep at a different angle. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit challenging too. So let's go ahead and make sure we have clearance. We'll close this up. It's kind of a, I don't want to say this is a moment of truth, but it's a big deal. We are totally free. See it guys? We're not hitting anything. So if we keep it approximately in the middle, that'll give us pretty good luck. Pretty good position. Okay, so now let's let's get that about where we think we want it. Which I think that's about where we want it. So now we're probably going to have to mark this, which is going to be difficult in and of itself. So let's hold that straight up and down. Let's mark this. So we have an idea of a semblance of where that's going to enter the fuse. Now, as we consider our folds, our next folds, we have to figure out a way to brace this without damaging any of this. That means we're probably going to have to slide something under it like a scraping knife. I don't think that this thing will fit because it's too complex. But something like this would be perfect. Or maybe just a couple of the shims. That's a good idea. I mean, you guys surely have something lying around that you can use. But I'm gonna use a couple of these shims, I think. And that's gonna do two things. It's gonna, first of all, give us something to spread out the damage <laughs> I'm just going to slide a few of those through. I could break a CD-ROM maybe and just use that because that would be strong. Um, we could use a piece of plastic but I don't know if it's going to be strong enough because we're going to be prying on it right next to the, the foam. Hmm. Lots of little challenges guys. That's these one-off projects. That's what you get. Lots of little challenges. I guess for now, let's just line these up. Maybe tape them together or something for now. We're going to have to use it at least twice. Because there's two sides of this. Let's get one more. I have a bunch of these. Because I get these. I got these on installation jobs. And they give us one every time we did one. Okay. Now if you don't understand why I'm doing this, you'll understand in a minute, so bear with me. Let's uh, plop a little piece of tape somewhere just to kind of hold these in position so I'm not constantly fighting them okay so <clears throat> the next step of course is to fold the wire and it's challenging to do this when it's straight and square okay but we're not straight and square right now so I think the second thing I got to do is I got to hold that 
So this is our normal flying position. Okay, so we're going to make it so the linkage is pointed straight at it. And that'll be pushed out like that, okay? And then when we're coming in for flaps, we'll have it pulled back toward us. And then parked, and then landing. Okay, parked and then landing. But one thing I did wrong on the Cessna is I didn't give myself enough differentiation between the full positions. So I want to be just a little bit past um, center. Okay, so now I need to somehow brace this so it doesn't rotate, which is going to be another strange challenge. Um, I mean, obviously, for now, we could probably just tape it down, except that's going to allow it to rotate. So we're going to have to find something that I can stab this into that's firm enough to keep it from rotating. I don't know if this foam is going to be firm enough to keep it from rotating is one of the problems. can definitely get it stabbed in there. That does stop it from rotating more or less. I don't know if I'm going to be able to open that now. I don't think I need that tape right a second. Oh, well, whatever. Live and learn, right? All these little complex ideas that I come up with. Okay, so... You don't need this to go all the way out the flap. But the more we go, the better it's going to work. Hmm, that's going to be very challenging to bend. What if I try these? Two of those like that, okay. And I'm just splitting the difference here. As soon as I go to do this, it's gonna it's gonna try to screw with me. So I can get the bend there. But then how do I keep from ripping up the foam on the other side subsequently? Because he's just gonna try to walk. Hmm. Normally this is a pretty easy part of the process, but it's not not going to be as easy on this one. I can just tell it's going to be a huge pain in the butt. It's going to be very difficult to make these um, symmetrical. Extremely challenging to make them symmetrical. But you can see we've already got we've already got the gist of it right there. Let's see if it works so far. I suspect it will. That was ridiculous, guys. I think it might be easier to just grin and bear trying to force it through there somehow. Or delaminate the wing from the fuse. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. I gotta get this cleaned up a little bit here. Okay, so you see how that works, guys? As I move the servo, or as the servo moves, it's going to move that. But right now we've got a bend in it, because we're not quite square. So I need to get those evened out. I don't know, so far it's working. These work really nice for this sort of thing. These do too. Why am I not using these? Do 
too much. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be pretty close. Because you see that little rock in there? That's going to make a big difference in the quality of deployment of flaps. Okay? See, and all I'm doing, I'm just spinning it down here. It's like if that were taped on there, then as you pull down on the servo, it would deploy the flaps. But we have a bit of a twist somewhere. And we can cover up the the metal wire. You're not going to necessarily see it, so don't get that don't get that in your head. The thing I can't necessarily real easily do is now that okay, now that we have the wiggle in there, okay? And we have this in there, we can position that so it's centrally located. Oh, I see what's going on. I see what's going on here. We're not quite totally true yet. Hmm. Okay, that's a lot better now. Ooh, yeah, that's that's better, but we've got a little twist now we got to get out of there. Okay, so once that's taped on, then the flap's going to move, right? Okay. But since we use this thin wire, it's super easy to manipulate. Okay, so let's use um, let's use this green tape. So we can take it off without peeling off finish and stuff. Well, I say without feel, peeling off finish, but this stuff will even peel off finish on a UMX. Okay, and but we're going to have to take this back off. I'm 100% sure of it while we're doing the rest of the process. So we might as well figure out how we're going to do it so we can mitigate damage now on the next, oh geez, on the next ones. All right, cool. So now... Ooh, look at that fancy dance. Okay, so now let's let's come out here. Um, I just I think we should just go about halfway out. I think we should just try to bend it. We can hold this now. The middle one's really going to be the worst. Okay, so we've got it bent, and then these things are just so much bigger than this piece of wire, so I should be able to just clip it. Now that's probably a little bit longer than we need it. We'll trim it down as necessary. But now you guys are beginning to see my problem that I was talking about at the end of last video. And we have a couple other details we got to work out too. Don't get me wrong. There's a few details we got to work out. Like this isn't totally square down. But you can hold that and potentially rotate. Okay. See, like that needs to be braced down there at some point too, which is no big deal. We'll get to that. But just what concerns me is that, like even right now, Okay, honestly, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to get the, get the angles to work out. That's pretty close, actually. You see that little angle I bumped in there? But I don't think it's going to deploy the flaps at the same rate. Let's double check. Let's just try it. Some of this is guess and check, guys. You may have noticed. You know, and there's nobody saying that if the crap hits a fan on this plan that we can't take that servo out and just use the receiver to run a you know a micro servo or something like that i don't want to do it that way at all but it's possible okay so it's it's binding up right now because as we deploy then we're running into the flap with the tip of that so i'm just trying to think if I were to fold this here again back, I've got an idea and I think it's going to work. Okay, 
So hear me out, guys. I make a collar, and the collar is allowed to slip up and down. And then we can get our geometry right here. Okay? So then the collar slips up and down onto that. So let's get an example of a collar. Um, you know, and I mean, I'm not saying this is what we would use, but it's just uh, something for proof of concept. You know, something, this would be super easy for proof of concept, but it's, a, it's like way too big. Just like a spout from some bottle that I had lying around. And obviously we'll use something that's more refined, more appropriately sized. Otherwise there'd just be way too much play on it. Do you see what's happening? We're allowed to deploy almost the same difference. Oh, that's pretty awesome, guys. Okay. Oh, man, that's kind of a heart attack relief right there. So, what we need to do is we need to find uh, something that's small and strong that would work as a collar and that I can just temporarily tape on here. Uh, the other thing we need to do is the next time we do this, well, the next time we do this, we're not going to have a differentiation there. It's going to be the same angle. Plus, we need to bend this down some, too. Just need to give it a second, and it'll bend it down some. Not quite where we need to be yet. So we have to brace it here, and then bend it down just a, t just a touch. I see it's wanting to bite into that every time we miss. So I'm going to clip this just a hair. I might need to use this to clean up the tip, but i got to be super careful I don't overheat it. Because once it's overheated, it's going to want to eat into the foam. And I do have safety glasses on if it matters, guys. Just in case you're wondering. Okay, so we do have some of this brass collar here. I wonder if we could use that if it's the right size. Let's see if this fits in there. That'd be a super tight tolerance. Might almost be too tight a tolerance because it's not going to allow it to slip. Okay. That I think it's probably too tight a tolerance. Um... Well, the other thing is, I got, I got to bend this back up. This is going to definitely be a back and forth until we get these angles to deploy the same. And I've run into situations like this where it seems like, oh, it's going to be no big deal, and then, like three hours later, you're still fighting it. You see, I didn't get that angle right yet. Hmm. All right, I'm going to look for something real quick. Okay, I got an idea, guys. What if we took this little piece? Because we're not going to need that little piece in this project. We might some other day. But if we took this little piece and we cut it off, that would give us this little ring. Okay? And then this little ring will most definitively slide through. Okay, now two things we could do with that. One, we could use that as a guide at some point, but we don't need a guide yet. So what we're more concerned with right now is just doing this. Oh, get up there, you little turd. Okay, so you see what's going to happen, though, is this is going to be allowed to act as some sort of like a bearing here. So, I, oh, I'm super reluctant to do this. Usually you can break this stuff off if you need to, okay? So I'm just going to do this as a temporary test, okay? I hate to do this test, but whatever. It is what it is. We could tape it down, but I think the tape's going to interfere too much. So we'll just do it like that. Just a small amount. We'll be able to redo it. 
Um, I guarantee that'll break off with no damage if we want, okay? So just gonna let it set for a second, then we're gonna see how the action works. Ho, 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 ho. See, it broke off immediately, because I didn't have enough glue, and I just wonder if it's gonna break off all the time, or if it's just broke off that time because we didn't do enough glue. The other thing is I could stick the whole plastic thing through the wing, through that little chunk. We're just gonna get a lot more aggressive with the glue this time and see if that's all it takes. My guess is we might have some geometry working against us where it's wanting to peel it off of there. It is pivoting. Well, the other thing is once this is held down, that'll change that a little bit. And the other thing is, I don't know if we're gonna deploy a whole lot more than that, but like right, right like that, 